But when it comes to strong, light, and flexible materials built atom by atom, another natural material may hold the key. It's not new. In fact, it's been around for hundreds of millions of years. It's spider silk. Spider silk has been shown to have more tensile strength than steel and Kevlar. It can stretch to 140% of its length without breaking and remains flexible even in extreme cold. It's also so lightweight that a mere pound of the stuff could form a single strand long enough to stretch around the equator. But could we ever harvest enough to put it to use? I paid a visit to the American Museum of Natural History in New York, where I met Nicholas Godley. This is it. This is your baby? This is the big one. Who enlisted the help of more than a million spiders to make this breathtaking piece of fabric. It's the largest known textile and sample or piece of spider silk in the world. To truly appreciate this remarkable material, you have to feel it. The main piece is so valuable, it's off limits, even to its creator. But Nicholas has brought a smaller sample. It feels really, really, really soft. Like animal wool or something. I challenge you to break off this piece. <laughs> I'm going to break before it does. OK, it does not break. It's like pulling a strand of steel. Wow. It's beautiful, and it's super strong. Could we ever put spider silk to practical use? It's very difficult, obviously, to do this on a commercial scale. And it took a million sixty-three thousand spiders, roughly, to make. Jeez. It takes about 20 minutes for each spider, and they produce about 400 yards of thread. Each thread was pulled by hand from a spider's spinneret. It took four years and millions of strands to weave this 11-foot-long masterpiece. Its rarity is a testament to the sheer difficulty of harvesting this material. But that may soon change, thanks to this guy. So here's where we keep our spiders. Um, we have special little cages for them in this room. Spider central, huh? Whoa! It's not funny! Not funny! So you're now an official Spider-Man affiliate. <laughs> This is Randy Lewis, a biologist at the University of Wyoming who's stuck on spider silk. Wow. This is a golden orb weaver. Golden orb weaver. You just cup your hand and get behind her. Why is she making web right now? Because she's she wants to make sure if she falls, she catches herself. So she's constantly she spinning out that drag line? Whenever, whenever they move, they leave the drag line behind. That's kind of where it got its name. Randy has been fascinated by the amazing properties of dragline silk for 15 years. And he knows all too well the difficulty of extracting silk from spiders. So he set out to find a way to mass produce the stuff in hopes of revolutionizing the world of strong materials. Wyoming is ranch country. So when Randy began to consider how to solve the problem, his thoughts turned to livestock. He figured maybe he could combine a little old-fashioned animal husbandry with the emerging science of genetic engineering. Now, thanks to Randy, these goats have just a little bit of spider in them. Transgenic, that's the word for, for what these goats are? Right, means that they have a gene from another organism that's been put into their chromosomes. Genes are sections of DNA that contain the encoded instructions for making proteins. Scientists identified the two genes in spider DNA that make silk. They copied one of the genes and spliced it into the DNA of goats so that they would make spider silk protein in their milk. I'm a little worried about what we're going to find in here. Eight-legged goats, giant you dripping webs. You won't be able to tell the normal goats from the transgenic goats because they're all exactly the same. Uh. <laughs> oh. I had a dog like you once. It's impossible just by looking to tell these goats from their non-spidey brethren. But scientifically, they're very valuable. Yeah, you're special. You've been genetically modified. How does it feel to be genetically modified, huh? 
only 50% of Randy's goats will inherit the necessary gene, and the females that are born with it will go on to produce spider silk protein in their milk. And that's what I've come all this way to see for myself. Can I try it? You're certainly welcome to. We normally use the electric just because it's a whole lot faster, but um, you're welcome to. Faster, but you've never seen me milk a goat. All right, well, you're about to find out here. So this one's skim and this is 2%? Well, in this case, they're both spider silk, so <laughs> okay. you, you, can, you can choose either one you want. Okay, so just grab and, and tug, just like? Right, just squeeze down, you can use your fingers and just. Wow. What percent of this milk is spider silk stuff? For most of these, it's relatively low. So we're talking about um, maybe one to two percent. Gives two percent milk a whole new meaning. Yeah, that's right, two percent. Uh, yeah, we, we'd love we'd love to see ten percent, but we'll take two percent at this <laughs> point in time. Next begins the painstaking process of coaxing the silk protein out of the milk. So we take the milk that we collected out at the farm. We pump it onto this column, which has a whole bunch of very small tubes in it. All right. Tubes have holes in it so that the spider silk protein and the milk proteins come out of the tubes, and it keeps the fat inside. So what's left is basically goat skim milk. Exactly. Eventually, Randy comes away with a vial of highly concentrated silk protein. How much milk went into making this tiny drop of? Um, from our best goats, that would be about a quarter milk. Wow. And then what? How much silk can you get out we of We can this? get at least two to three meters. Wow. All right, let's have a look. The final step is the most delicate. Randy's team takes the protein liquid and slowly injects it into an alcohol bath, which causes the liquid protein to solidify into a strand of actual spider silk. So this is it. So this is your man-made spider silk. This is man-made spider silk. Now to prove its metal. Randy loads the strand into a machine that measures tensile strength. Look, you can start to see it moving. It is, it's straightening out. The silk stretches as it resists being pulled until it just broke. I'm sorry, it's Randy. Broke. But there's nothing to be sorry about. A computer measures the force it takes to break the sample, telling them its tensile strength. Remember, the tensile strength of steel its resistance to being pulled is what kept my plane from plunging into the ocean. The tensile strength of spider silk appears to be greater than steel or even Kevlar. Not as strong as carbon nanotubes, but more flexible, easier to make in long strands, and certainly not toxic. We are stronger than Kevlar, we're stronger than steel, or we're not stronger than the natural silk. The spider silk protein demonstrates nature's ingenuity. Its structure is comprised of three distinct sections. Randy compares one of those sections to children's building blocks. So if you look at a molecular model, what you see is, is that they have little pins and little holes just like Legos. So if you take and put them together and stack them up like this and you try to pull them apart. These are, these are proteins here? These are the proteins and that's part of the protein. We try to pull it apart it doesn't pull apart. Okay, so if I'm, I'm pulling this way and this right. way, and this is the drag line, and it's not coming apart. That's, yeah, that's right. So that's, that's one part of the drag line. Proteins, good for you, okay? So 400 million years, spider's been playing with Legos. <laughs> the second section of the protein is stretchy. For elasticity, they have something that literally looks like a molecular spring. When you pull on the ends, right. It stretches. Okay, so this and, is... And, and that, that's the elasticity. This would be a different protein? No, it's the same protein. It has different parts. Okay. So we have, in the same protein, we have Legos. Right. We have springs. Okay. And then in order to put them together, we have zippers. Zippers hold things together very well, but they have some flexibility. So you have a way of being able to put this together with a spring. It might be too tight to do that. So you put a zipper in between, and now you have dragline silk. These basic building blocks repeat over and over again, trillions of them in each strand of silk. The complex structure is evolution's way of enhancing the strength of the common raw materials found everywhere in nature. Before I leave, Randy suggests one last experiment for us would-be spider-men. You getting anything? I don't feel a thing. Nothing. 